right, let's go fishing. All right. Hey, Brim, there's already one down here. Come on, Brim. Should we try to catch a fish? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Bob Jensen. This is Fishing the Midwest. Thanks for stopping by. It's our 20th year of Fishing the Midwest, and this is our last show of the 2014 season. So what we're going to do is kind of take a look back at Fishing the Midwest the past 20 years. We're at the West Fork Wharf in Sheffield, Iowa. The West Fork Wharf is a supper club that my wife and I created, and the supper club side kind of is a, a reflection of my fishing history. Uh, that bait right there, that's a suik. When I guided for muskies in Leech Lake in Walker, Minnesota in the early 80s, that was the hottest bait I had. That bait right there is a crankbait. I won a big tournament in the early 80s in that one. Okay, let's take a look. I think it was the biggest walleye I ever caught on TV. Let's go back a few years and take a look at that guy. Oh, there's that another one? Yeah, but it doesn't feel very big. Keep the power on just a little bit. Not a very big, well, there he is, there's some throbbing. Ooh, much better. Oh, I think that's a big fish. Feels good, Larry. I'm on my way, Bob. Oh, yes, I would say that's a dandy. Why don't you, let's see how big he was. Think he's gonna fit in that net? Oh, you're bragging now. Yes, I am. You're bragging now. I'm getting hopeful. Oh, <laughs> this one is big. big this fish. is a big one, yep, yep. Yep, boy. Well, oh, get my the bigger net, Larry. Get the bigger net, hurry up. Get the bigger net, Larry. Oh, hurry up, Larry. Hurry up, Larry. Hurry up, Larry. That's up, Larry. a nice fish. Hurry up, Larry. Oh, 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 oh that's got to be. That's a 10. Oh, that's easily a 10. Oh, look that's where the bait came out. bigger than 10. Look at that bait came out right there. You did not have him hooked very well. Good enough. You would have cried if you'd have lost that one. I on would the have surface. cried like a baby. Oh. We got to weigh this one. Jeepers. Let's weigh this one. Not too high up. Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. Wow, that's a horse. That's a nice fish. <laughs> but we're gonna take a picture oh. of this one. Just for posterity. You know, in uh, Manitoba they have a Master Angler Award. That's uh, I'm now a master angler in eight, Manitoba. Eight pounds or above, <laughs> isn't it? Oh bat football. I promise to get this on here any minute now. Oh man. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Man, oh man. That's okay. a nice fish. Let's get him back in the water. Let's. That was a huge walleye. It was one of those greenbacks you get in Manitoba. And 33, 34 inches, we're thinking 13, 14 pounds. It was a big one. Now let's take a look at the fastest walleye bite I've ever been on. Green Bay, out of Oconto, Wisconsin, just has so much good walleye fishing for big ones and lots of them. But the fastest bite we ever got on, I think, was with Bruce Deshano and Dean Arnoldison. It was only three or four years ago, and man, it was just nonstop action, and they were big walleyes. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. There we go. Yep. Look at that. Hang on, Bruce. Big waves. Yeah, hang on, Bruce. Woo. Couple rolled waves. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, these are all just nice fish. Look at ah, that. Look at that. Look at that. Yep. Hey, look at your nice wall. That's a good wall. Huh? That's a good wall. Full time you let Nicole in. <laughs> Back to sheep fish, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Oh, boy, nice color. Too nice. I'll tell you what, that's a lot of excitement there. <laughs> I guess it's a short amount of time, huh? I mean, gee, buddy, Christmas. <laughs> it's going to take us longer to get the rods back out than it is yeah. to catch another batch of fish, I hope. Yeah. Get him out of here before he tangles up. That's why we keep two nets in the boat. Look at that. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Nice fish. There oh, that's comes. a nice fish. All oh, nice fish good. out here. They're all <laughs> nice fish. Good one, huh? So then what we'll do is we'll get to the, the end of the drift and we'll go around and start again. We won't throw into the wind, right? Right. Nope. But with the wind, it's a little breezy out here, but not too bad. Nice little crop. Yeah. Yeah. Good fish, huh? Good color. Is that a meter? It's a meter, huh? It's a 
This is what it feels like to reel in a fish. I like it. Feels pretty nice, huh? I like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we share. I know. Yeah, he feels pretty good. I haven't done this very much today, so I think. <laughs> a lot of tournaments. Are planter boards a big part of your your arsenal? Oh yeah, I've, we use we troll a lot. When we're in the Great Lakes system. We're pulling spinners probably 75% of the time. That's the only way to go. Spread your lines out. You're in clear water. You want to get them away from the boat, and you want to fish them. Yeah, for yeah. spooking, and, and you want to fish them suspended. And you can get more lines in the water more effectively with boards. Exactly. Sure. I mean, most of the tournaments we can only run to a person, but when we're out having a little fun. Run six and you want to spread them all. Yep. Nice fish. Oh, yep. You're going to have to on your Ooh. side. Maybe. I'll get them over here. You ready? Oh, yeah. All right. Nice good. fish there. There you go. That's a good one if somebody wanted to eat one. Boy, that Green Bay has such a good area for walleyes and catfish. When we come back, we'll continue to take a look at the history of fishing the Midwest over the past 20 years. Stay tuned. Fishing the Midwest is presented by Bionic Line. Your fish, your line. Beautiful Cabotogama Lake, gateway to Voyagers National Park. Evinrude E-Tech, 300 hours, no dealer scheduled maintenance. Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Impulse Soft Baits. 143% more effective than the competition. And the best alternative to live bait. Unique colors, actions, scent. Impulse Soft Plastics catch more fish, period. Lake Cabotogama in Voyagers National Park is your year-round destination for experiencing nature at its finest. Enjoy the solitude of the pristine wilderness while having all the comforts of home available at the many full-service resorts. The fishing is world-class. So are all the other outdoor activities that are abundant in all the seasons. Cab is the perfect place for your family or group of friends. And Cab is an easy drive from anywhere in the Midwest. Cabotogama Lake in northern Minnesota. Discover Cab now. I started using Salmo Hornets more and more a few years ago. And in those few years, I'm catching more and more fish. There's just something about a hornet that makes a walleye or a bass or a panfish or whatever want to eat it. Hornets have a lifetime guarantee and they're hand tuned so they run perfect right out of the box. Cabela's has an outstanding selection of hornets in the best sizes and colors and the folks at Cabela's can tell you which ones are the hottest. Salmo didn't invent the crankbait, they just perfected it. Insist on Salmo at Cabela's. E-Tech has been outperforming four-stroke engines for years. But what about the latest 150 four-strokes that claim to deliver two-stroke-like torque? See the proof for yourself. Get your free DVD now and watch how the two-stroke Evinrude E-Tech 150 outpulls and out-accelerates the four-stroke competition. See how it wins when it comes to maintenance, ease of winterization, and more. Evinrude E-Tech is the true champion. Go to Evinrude150challenge.com and get your free DVD now. Welcome back to Fishing the Midwest. We're taking a look at 20 years of fishing the Midwest and we're coming from the West Fork Wharf in Sheffield, Iowa. It's my wife and I's supper club. That fan up there, that ceiling fan, a friend of ours, Dale Kelson, made it for us. 
It's 13 feet in diameter, and it's a real eye catcher. It really is. It's a cool deal. It's the only one like it anywhere. Let's now take a look at the biggest bass I ever caught in TV, the biggest largemouth bass I ever caught in TV. It was with John Peterson. We're in northern Minnesota. Take a look at this guy. So for sure it's coming right at us now. What is it? Nice bass. Whoa, nice bass. Oh, beautiful. Can you grab him, John? Yeah, nice digging. Ooh. Oh, is he ever a nice big one, Bobby? Oh, good job. Good job. Come back here, though. We want him on this side of the boat. You can get him in the. You're about close over here. I'll try to get a hold of him. Oh, he's a big one. Oh, he's a big one. Woo he is wow. a big one. Woo, and he hit and came right to the boat. That is a magnum. Look at there. Oh, man. <laughs> now that is a real. Boy, and he was right at the edge of those rushes. Whoa. Wow. That is a nice bass. That is a six pound bass, Bob, or better. Is it really? Huge. I like him. It's I huge. like him. Look at that guy. He whacked her. He whacked Bye her. there, buddy. Good job. <laughs> oh, that was a big largemouth. I don't know, 22, 23 inches. The Midwest has so much good largemouth bass fishing. Like I mentioned, my wife and I designed and, and decorated the uh, wharf side of our, of, our, of our place here with a lot of family and uh, fishing mementos. That's Kim's granddaughter, Kate, with a catfish she caught down on their family property. Kate's mom and dad are introducing their kids to fishing. That's Kim's dad and her brothers a few years ago. They were big into fishing growing up. This is my nephew, Sam and my dad with a walleye that Sam caught on Clear Lake when he was, I don't know, four or five years old. It's a big walleye, Clear Lake in north central Iowa. You know, lots of good memories there. You know, I mentioned the good largemouth bass fishing throughout the, uh, throughout the Midwest. Let's take a quick look at just a montage of some of the largemouth bass action we've had over the past 20 years. The fishing for bass, both largemouth and smallmouth, across the Midwest is so good. I really urge you to take advantage of it. There's another part of history for fishing in the Midwest. That's a 17-pound northern pike that Kent Herbeck caught through the ice up at Westlake Okaboji in northwest Iowa. Caught it on four-pound test line. That was an adventure. Hey, when we come back, we'll continue to take a look at fishing the Midwest over the past 20 years. Stay tuned. Fishing the Midwest is brought to you by Impulse. Excite the bite with scent color and action. Clear Lake, Iowa Chamber of Commerce. Stay at the shore and explore. Salmo. Insist on Salmo. I enjoy making good food, but I would rather fish than cook, even when it's 10 below zero. That's why my family and I invented the Dakota Grill. We let the grill do all the work. I just set the temperature and my grill does the rest. Whether I smoke, grill, barbecue, or bake. Your meats will always be juicy, flavorful, and healthy. Visit dakotagrills.com for recipes, cooking videos, and more. And unleash your inner chef. boat ride on the water, a concert in the shadow of legends, a day of fishing in one of the premier fisheries in the Midwest. These are just a few of the wonderful attractions Clear Lake has to offer. Nestled in northern Iowa, Clear Lake is known for its beautiful scenic landscapes, top-rated beaches, and yearly events. From the annual winter dance party to the blockbuster 4th of July celebration, Clear Lake has something for everyone. Stay at the shore and explore. 
Bell Specialty Marine services their specialty. The Bruggenthies family has been in the boat business for almost 35 years. For performance and reliability, you can't beat a Ranger boat team with an Evinrude motor. Their staff knows exactly how to rig your boat for maximum pleasure. Al Specialty Marine also has premier pontoons and a wide variety of other boats that will fit your needs. Al Specialty Marine will do an outstanding job of taking care of all your boating needs. Al Specialty Marine, stop on by! Al Specialty Marine! Welcome back to Fish in the Midwest. We're at the West Fork Wharf in Sheffield, Iowa, taking a look at 20 years of fishing the Midwest. Probably, I think, the fastest bite I've ever been on was an upper red lake through the ice with John Peterson, Dwayne Peterson, and John Janicek. It's when those big crappies were, were so abundant in upper red lake, the action just didn't stop. Take a look at this. <laughs> Look at this one. Look at that one, Dwayne. Oh, what a fish. <laughs> I think you got uh, me for the night right now, but I'm going to catch you. There's one, Bob. See there? Yeah, that's a nice crappie. You adjusted the depth of that a little bit ago, didn't you? I dropped it down about another foot, foot and a half, and I started getting a whole lot more bites. I think they're close to the bottom. A we foot made a difference. Them. such a fast bite that was so much fun this guy right here comes from eagle river wisconsin we were up there fishing and we came across a guy that did chainsaw art this is how this bear was born turned that log into a piece of art in no time. Wasn't that something? Hey, I've been so happy and proud and fortunate to have worked with the Cabela's folks for a long time. Now, these people are absolutely hardcore about fishing. We were with uh, Terry Fitzpatrick and Jim Hunt on the Mississippi River a couple years ago, and, and the weather was terrible, and Terry was apologetic that the fishing wasn't going to be very good, he didn't think. Let's take a look at that fishing. Jeepers, I really like this spot. Look at yours, Jim. Look at that guy. Look at this guy. Look how fat that guy is. I mean, it's not probably what you're accustomed uh -huh. to, but there is nothing wrong with that on a on a day when it's 35 degrees. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's cool. oh. You have used that. You did a good job, Jim. I thought you were going to knock him off for Terry. Not quite as good as Jim's, but that's a nice fish. There, that's a nice fish. Absolutely. Okay, so this is what happened. The weather conditions were terrible, and Terry thought the fishing was bad. In three hours, we caught 40 largemouth bass. Those folks at Cabela's, they just live the outdoor life, and that's why I'm so proud to be part of their family. When you go to a Cabela's store, the person you talk with is going to be able to help you enjoy your outdoors even more. Here's what I mean. Danny, you know, planer boards really give us a, a, a lot of options for catching walleyes in particular, but other species. But in a state like Minnesota that just got a one line per person law, do they still come into play? Yeah, planer boards are excellent for the state of Minnesota. A lot of times when we're trolling for these open water basin walleyes, um, it allows you to get your baits farther away from the boat. A lot of times, if you're trolling through with calm days, clear waters, the fish will spook off to the sides a little bit. These planer boards allow you to get right into that strike zone where the fish are at. 
And um, the other option is, you know, a lot of times these bait fish will be suspended. You can use the planer boards to pull your spinner eggs or even your crankbaits through these suspended fish. Because the walleyes are up there with those suspended bait fish. Yes. And this is an add-on, it's a tattle flag, and that's a slick deal. Yeah, the tattle flag works really great. I mean, what it does is, once you hook your line up through it, when a fish bites, it'll pull the flag down. And just is just like indicating that you got a fish works well, great. Yeah, and also you know you get that flag with the crankbait. It's, it's, it, it, the, it shows the crankbait's working right. Yeah, you can see everything's working great. And if it picks up a piece of weed or something, that flag's gonna stand straight up. Yep. And it indicates you got to reel in and take that weed off the crankbait. Yep. We got a great selection of offshore planer boards here at Cabela's. Stop in and see them. For the best outdoor advice, stop by Cabela's. Okay, when we come back, a final look at 20 years of fishing the Midwest. Stay tuned. Fishing the Midwest is presented by Northland Fishing Tackle, made by fishermen for fishermen. Cabela's, it's in your nature. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Dakota Grills, release your inner chef. Impulse Soft Baits. 143% more effective than the competition. And the best alternative to live bait. Unique colors, actions, scent. Impulse soft plastics catch more fish, period. When the weather turns for the worse, you need more than a hope for the best. It's why every Ranger multi-species design is geared to crush rough water while delivering solid tracking and a smooth, dry ride. Coupled with Evinrude E-Tex power, performance, and 300 hours with no dealer schedule maintenance, these total performance machines are built for the battle. Experience more with Evinrude E-Tech. Look at you all grown up. The more they change, the more fun it is to look back and remember. Life Touch School Photography. At Al's Specialty Marine, service is their specialty. The Brugenthies family has been in the boat business for almost 35 years. For performance and reliability, you can't beat a Ranger boat team with an Evinrude motor. Their staff knows exactly how to rig your boat for maximum pleasure. Al Specialty Marine also has premier pontoons and a wide variety of other boats that will fit your needs. Al Specialty Marine will do an outstanding job of taking care of all your boating needs. Al Specialty Marine, stop on by. Al Specialty Marine. Welcome back to Fishing the Midwest. That's Kim's grandson, Max. We're down at the creek throwing rocks. And I've got a few signs around the wharf, my philosophies on life, you know, and uh, I kind of like those. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy about fishing is the outdoors. And through the past 20 years, we've seen a lot of stuff in the outdoors. Here's some of the animals and birds and that sort of thing that just are such an important part of a fishing trip. you know those animals and birds and stuff are just such an important part of the outdoor experience. Another sign with one of my philosophies in life that's here at the West Fork Wharf and being here at the Supper Club is kind of making me hungry. Let's get together with Adam Sorensen for some Dakota Grills information. Adam what are you making today? Well remember yesterday we cured this chicken? 
Well, here it is. We're gonna we're gonna get ready to, to smoke it on the grill. And for this, we want to use mesquite wood. Of course, you don't want to go overboard with mesquite because it's a very potent, uh, very potent flavor. So we'll just fill that level full. And this is a good recipe for turkey and. And pheasants also? Yeah, wonderful, especially for pheasant. because yep. um, It'll make your, your entire pheasant juicy. Yep. And we're just gonna season this up nice. Now this is brined, so it's already salty. So we don't have to put a lot of seasoning on, but we do want a little bit. And we wanna smoke at 320 degrees. And enter it in. And chicken, as you recall, has to be cooked to uh, at least 165 degrees uh, in order to be considered food safe. So we need to adjust our probe temperature. And we're just gonna go 165 exactly. And realizing that it will overshoot probably about five degrees. And that's all right, that's what we want anyway. And we could also do that with turkey and pheasants, you said? Yes, yes. Yep. And it doesn't matter what you do it on, it makes it wonderful. Actually turns it into a form of ham. Yeah, let's see what this guy looks like. All righty. And you said because of the way this cooks, it's like a rotisserie. Yeah, because it's all insulated, it gives you even temperatures throughout. All the way around. And that means um, it just, it cooks evenly. I'm gonna brown it very nicely from all directions. It looks nice. It's tender. It's very tender. Looks juicy. It's, yeah. Show you what that looks like here. Let me cut into this and just show you how juicy that is. Look at that. Wow. Look at the juices coming running out of that breast meat. Look at that. And that is absolutely normal when you, when you use really? this recipe. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit warm, but it looks if you're really careful, hot. it's not bad. When it's that hot, you can't be very careful. <laughs> Oh, very moist. Really, oh, yeah. really good. Yeah. Man. And you see the juices here. Thanks, Adam. You know, the fishing's fun, and the birds and the ducks and all that are fun, but the most important part of the past 20 years is the people. The people that I've had the good fortune to spend a day in the boat with. Let's revisit some of those folks. He's fun. It. That's 20 years of fishing the Midwest, and it's been such a wonderful 20 years for the most part. Such a thrill for the most part. I'm very fortunate. What the next 20 years brings, I don't know. You know? But I really encourage you to take care of our outdoors. Introduce your family to the outdoors. Hey, for all of us at Fishing the Midwest, thanks for stopping by. Be nice to one another. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>